This video is about learning the absolute basics of Linux command line. Super basic, super basic, super basic. But here's the deal. After this video, when you're done with this, you're going to know more than 99% of the people in the world about how Linux works and what you can do with it because everybody's afraid to learn Linux, but you've already taken that first step. So let's start on the command line where almost all cool things with Linux happen. And we will get you that first step towards a better career, a better life, a better understanding of Linux, whatever it is you're after in the Linux world, this is your first step. And it's a huge and easy first step. The first thing we need to know is that when you open up a terminal window like this, the program that it runs is called bash, which stands for born again shell, but it's, it's a shell, right? And this shell that we use in most places use is called bash. Uh, that's that'll be important in a minute and you'll see why but just know that when we talk about a bash script or opening a bash terminal this this thing right here this is a bash terminal and that's what we're going to uh, work with when we learn about command line basics now when you type things on the command line like if we type ls it's going to give us a listing of the directories in our current directory ls is a command and it's a file on our file system so if we do ls in the bin folder this is going to be all of the binary files that are in that folder and these are what we can run i bet if we look close enough h i j k l sure enough there is ls it's in the bin folder and we can actually type the word type ls and it says ls is alias to this i'll be honest i didn't even know that the the command type existed. Uh, I was looking at the objectives for the Linux Essentials course. So I thought, oh, cool, that's a command I didn't know. But anyway, type is the name of the command and it'll just tell you about specific commands on your system. I've never used it once in my 20 plus years as a Linux person, but hey, we learned, we both learned something new today. Another command I wanna show you is the which command. If you type which ls, it'll tell you where the ls command comes from. Oh, it's user bin ls. Okay, uh, so it's in the bin folder, but also user bin ls. And that just tells us where it finds it. Now, here's the deal. Let's say that I had a file in here called, I'm just gonna use the touch command, pickle, right? So now I have a file called pickle in my current directory. But if I type the word pickle, it's gonna say, I don't know what pickle is. That's, that's not a command. What are you talking about? And that's because ls up here, is in our path and what the path is is it's a variable set up that the computer itself uses to look for things that you type so it says okay you just typed the word pickle i'm going to look in the path of places that i know binary files live and if it's in that path we'll run it if it's not in there i'm going to say what are you talking about i don't have any idea what the command pickle even means and so that path is a variable and I'll show you exactly where that lives. If you simply type ENV, it's gonna show all of the variables that are set for our bash terminal, okay? And one of those variables is path. And what this is saying is, okay, computer, if, so, if Sean types the word pickle in our bash terminal here, I want you to look inside user local S bin inside that folder. I also want you to look in user local bin and user S bin and user bin and all of these other folders for a command called pickle. If it's not in one of these folders, then I don't want you to run it. And that's exactly what happened. It wasn't in there, so it didn't run it. But if there is a program that lives in one of these folders that is, that is defined in our path variable, it is going to run it. For example, echo, let's say which echo. Okay, it lives in user bin, and that's where the echo command is located. So let's look up here. Is user bin in our path? Well, user local s bin, user local bin, user s bin, user bin. So in the user bin folder, if Sean types something that happens to be in there, I want you to execute it, which if I type echo, it will just execute it. Echo. Hey, look at that. Echo. Echo. Hello. Hello. Echo. Well, not heck. Echo. Hello, Sean. Hello, Sean. Pretty cool, right? And so the echo command is executed because it happens to be in our path. Now, that's just an example of one variable that is set when the computer boots up. We could set another variable. Let's say thing equals something. And now if I were to type echo with a dollar sign thing, ha ha ha. When you put it to your question, 
The symbol of the United States dollar is dollar. Echo, stop. US My Amazon Echo is named Echo. And so I, when I said the word Echo, it started answering me about something about a dollar sign. So anyway, sorry for that interruption. I unplugged her. So when you when you set a variable like thing to a value, you reference it by putting a dollar sign in front of the word. So when I say Echo thing, it replies or it echoes out or it types out on the screen the value of the variable thing. And that happens to be something because we set it right here. Now there is a, there is a caveat here. Let's say that we started up a child process and this is going to get a little bit confusing, but remember I said, this is a bash terminal. Okay. So I started a new bash terminal. And now if I say echo thing, there's nothing there because what it's done is we were running a bash terminal and then we started another bash terminal inside that bash terminal. Okay. And so that new bash terminal that's running inside the terminal, it doesn't know anything about the variables that we set unless we export variables, in which case all of the child bash terminals that we start inside there also get that thing. Let me show you what I mean. Let's quickly type exit. And that's going to get us out of this bash that we opened up, right? We started another bash terminal. We typed exit and it got us out of that bash ter terminal. So now if we type echo thing, it's going to be something again, right? What if we did export thing? Now, if we type bash echo, ha ha ha. The thing is we exported this variable thing. We, when we export it, that means any child processes are going to inherit it. So when we echo thing now, it's, a, it's set to something because we exported it to all child processes. We'll exit out of this bash terminal that we started. And now we are back to the beginning where of course thing is still set. I hope that made sense. I know that was kind of confusing, like, whoa, terminals inside terminals. And it's like, you know, inception going on. But the point I wanted to make is how we set variables and things like the path variable are very useful because that tells the system where to find executable files. But we can use variables too. Like when we use that variable thing and we set it to the value of something, but we need to be careful because if we start doing things that will launch another shell terminal, like bash when we run bash inside of it and it starts a whole new like environment if we don't export those variables to child processes that doesn't you know inherit that value of the variable thing so again that was a little bit heavy but i hope it made sense what we were doing and how we started like bash inside of another bash that we'd already been running so the next part's pretty simple let's say in our home folder here we had a file that had two words in the name i'm just going to rename this Pickle, let's see, rename it to pickle chicken. All right, so it's, we have a file now named pickle chicken. And if we just type LS, we can see right there, it's pickle chicken. And this is interesting. Do you see how there's quotes around it? That is just our bash terminal showing us that this is one file that just has uh, two words in there because spaces are often used to separate different parts of a command. So if I were to say LS pickle chicken it'd be like there's no such file called a pickle and there's no such file called chicken what you need to do is like do ls and then put in quotes either single or double quotes either is fine pickle chicken close quotes and then it will show us that file pickle chicken so it's important when you're working with files that have spaces or strings of text that have spaces that you quote them so that the Linux system knows you're talking about a single entity instead of two separate things, pickle and chicken. And then one last little bit of fun that I want to show you is the history command. If you just type the word history, history, it's going to show us everything that we just did in numerical order. In fact, if you go up here, it's even going to show you some of the things that I did when I first started this system up. I installed the virtual box editions on this uh, virtual machine so that it would work right. And then all of these commands are what we typed as we went through. So history just shows you the history of the things that you've typed. And another shortcut is if you push the up arrow, which you can't really see me doing, but I'm just pushing the up arrow over and over, and it's going through the things that are in our history, that it remembers all the things that we did. So we can push up. And then when we get to something, we want to execute it again, just hit enter and boom, it'll do that thing again. And now in our history, you'll see it counts it as me entering it again. So history, then we 
up arrowed until we got to echo thing. We type that, and then that is part of our history too. Now, if you want to be sneaky or you feel silly if somebody saw all the weird things that you did on the command line, you can do history dash C, and that will clear the history. So now if we look at history. There's nothing in there except the word history that we just typed. Uh, so clearing the history can be good. It's it's not something I normally do because usually I'm the one on the command line and I like to be able to look back at what I did, especially if like I forgot the command that I used or I forgot the name of a file. It's nice to be able to look back and see what sorts of things you've done. That was it. I know the bash stuff and the environment variables are a little bit weird, uh, but right now you already know more than 99% of the people in the world know about Linux. And it wasn't even that bad. I even made it a little bit tough so you felt like you really learned something because guess what? You really learned something. It's kind of complicated, uh, but seriously, it's not too hard once you understand what's going on. So I hope you stick around and learn a lot more about Linux because it only gets cooler from here. I'll see you next time. Remember, learn everything, do what you love, and be kind. I'll see you at the next video.